Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. Meet a Seabury High School senior on Maui who is passionate about animals. Local artists and students partner together to paint a community mural at Keahau Shopping Center on the island of Hawaii. Art Walk is a popular community event that takes place monthly in Kapa'a on the island of Kauai. A Waipiu taro farmer on the island of Hawaii teaches students about growing taro. The principal of a charter school on Oahu got to be a crew member on the Hokalea to New Zealand as part of the worldwide voyage sail. All on this episode of Hiki no, coming to you from Waipahu High School, home of the Marauders. That's next on the nation's first statewide student news network, Hiki no Can Do! Here in the city of Waipahu on the island of Oahu is Hawaii's Plantation Village, an outdoor museum dedicated to showcasing life on Hawaii's sugar plantations. In 1897, Oahu Sugar Company built a sugar mill in Waipahu. Since then, Waipahu started growing as a sugar plantation town when people started migrating from China, Japan, the Philippines, and Portugal through worker contracts to work on these plantations. Today, many of Waipahu's residents are descendants of these plantation workers who decided to stay in Hawaii. The Oahu Sugar Company closed its doors in 1995 and the only thing remaining is a 175-foot tall smokestack of the original mill not far from this outdoor museum. The Waipahu smokestack stands tall after more than 100 years. While other physical representations of this time period have gone away, the remaining smokestack has become an iconic landmark for both Waipahu and the sugar plantation industry. Our first story takes us to the island of Maui, where we meet a high school senior who has been volunteering since she was 10 years old to help with training assistance dogs. Hi. No, Kate Peterson loves animals. She grew up on the family ranch in upcountry Maui where she learned patience working with dogs and horses. Kate volunteers at Assistance Dogs of Hawaii, a nonprofit organization that trains dogs to assist people who have disabilities and other special needs. Well, I was around 10 years old when I started working here, volunteering, and I started because my mom's really good friends with Mo Moore, who founded this um, organization on Maui, and I started as a really young kid um, just watching her train the dogs and watching graduations and seeing dogs get matched with people. And as I grew up and got to the age where I could finally volunteer and work here, I took that opportunity. Despite the demands of finishing her senior year at Seabury Hall School, Kate continues being an enthusiastic volunteer. Dog training certification requires a four-year college degree and a two-year apprenticeship. As a volunteer, Kate has assisted in training and in the process of matching a dog with a client. We normally look at traits of the dog first and through the one to two years of training the dog before they're matched, we look at the dog's personality and how they act and what qualities they're really good at with the human. So we're not necessarily matching the human with the dog, we're matching the dog with the human. And that kind of sounds similar, but it definitely has a really great success rate. The joy Kate experiences when she sees the clients interacting with their dogs fires her passion for this community service. Kate will never forget assisting with one very special match. For my eighth grade project, I helped in the process of training a dog for a woman named Cami. She used to be a beautiful hula dancer and soon was paralyzed to where she was in a wheelchair. And the dog Murphy, he um, he changed her life drastically and I'm getting goosebumps because of it because it was such an amazing experience to be able to see how happy she was with him 
just having a service dog, even if you are capable of opening a door with, even when you're in a wheelchair or little things like that, having a dog just makes it so much better and easier for you to get through your day and knowing that they're there supporting you all along the way um, definitely is one thing that has helped a lot of people all over the world. This is Lucas DiMartino from Seabury Hall Middle School for Hikino. Good girl. We take you now to the Hikino archives for a story about therapy dogs and how they are helping special needs students. Tales of Aloha is an all-volunteer, animal-assisted therapy organization that visits children in the classroom. Their mission is to provide the human-animal bond through animal-assisted therapy. Millie really likes it when the dogs come. It makes her happy. It actually helps with her muscles and it relaxes her. And actually, we've checked her heart rate and it lowers her heart rate. So. We know that physiologically it relaxes her as well. Tales of Aloha works with the Humane Society and goes on visitations to schools, nursing homes, private homes, and hospitals. The program has only a limited amount of volunteers and animals, while the demand is greater. We have about 50 dogs that go out throughout the community to visit all the other uh, facilities. Now, not all dogs can do therapy, so we have a special program where we take dogs and train them to do therapy work. Tales of Aloha accepts all therapy dogs as long as they're friendly, healthy, and at least one year of age. Before a dog can become a therapy dog, it has to pass the canine good citizen test. It's, any breed is fine, it's just about temperament. You know, they have to be patient and gentle and, um, you know, willing to learn. Sometimes the children feel lonely. But when the therapy animals come, they help the children overcome their loneliness. I think it's a wonderful program. I, I, I love that they're able to come into the schools and that they provide them with opportunities to interact with different animals. The children look forward to the dogs coming. They get excited on Tuesdays. They look forward to finishing their work as soon as I see the dogs coming around the corner and they all cheer and get excited. So. We love it. We love the Tales of Aloha. I think reading to the dogs helps build their, their confidence. Um, they're worried about making mistakes with their reading. With the dogs, they don't worry about that. In my butt, in my one belly button. My butt, in my butt, in my one belly button. When the dogs come, I feel happy. I like to brush them because, because they're so cute. Tales of Aloha's motto is changing lives one visit at a time. Whenever the children see the therapy dogs coming, they get excited and they can't wait to see them. This is Maddie Prislin from Kainalo Elementary for Hikino. Hikino is now on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Hikino. Can do. We are back on the island of Oahu near Pearl Harbor at Waipahu High School, home of the Marauders. U.S. Secretary of Education Arnie Duncan noted on his recent visit to our campus that Waipahu High School is at the forefront of American education. Waipahu offers building programs centered around six main pathways health, public and human services, natural resources, arts and communication, industrial engineering technology, and business. These pathways allow students to train and network with local organizations and businesses, which will help them be better prepared for their future career goals. Regardless whether or not the students have their goals all mapped out, the pathways allow students to explore multiple career options. Our next story takes us to the south side of the island of Hawaii to learn about a community mural that was created by artists and students working together. Kekula o Ehu Nui Kaimalino, located on the west side of Hawaii Island in Kealakekua, partnered with Mele Murals to create a seven-panel mural at the Keaho Shopping Center. The planning began in the summer of 2014 and was completed later that November. So our mural is split into two. 
on the left side of the theater doors are a section of three panels. And um, those are kind of like makabalu, like, which means eight eyes. And it's to tell you to look at uh, stories from as many different perspectives as you can, because that gets you closer to what the whole story is. Melee Murals is an art education and cultural preservation organization. They work with local youth and the community to create large-scale outdoor murals using prayer, meditation, and knowledge of history to conceptualize the images for the mural. They teach youth to become storytellers, painters, and community leaders. Kekai Mele Murals or Kanua Kaaina, Makahilu Theater, wa ike i ka nani a ka manao nui o kela Mele Murals. No laila, wa make make mako e hana ike kahi me alike me kela mane i makona. The whole panel's meaning is about balance. So in the holua, you have two sticks or two sleds, and you try to balance on it. So. To get forward, you have to be pretty well balanced. On a surfboard, you have to be pretty well balanced to go straight or to stay up on it. Um, and another balance is as above, so below. To the right of the theater doors is a section of four panels, and that one's really about pono. But not pono in the sense of justice, more in the sense of balance. So like being in harmony with the earth, like kanaka and aina. And, and how does that how does that translate to today? In addition to Ehunui Kaimalino students participating, Keiki from Punanaleo Okona Preschool and Konawaina High School were invited to work on the Keaho mural. I joined Mela Murals for the experience. During this experience, I learned different techniques such as spray painting, and I also learned more about our Hawaiian culture. It's important for these Mela Murals to be in our community because it, it expresses the artist and it tells a cultural story that everyone can connect to. The Keaho mural teaches us lessons from the past that we can translate to the future. The mural represents Hawaiian culture, created by the hands and hearts of its inhabitants. This is Simon Ellis from Konawaina for Hiki No. We're back here on the island of Oahu, here at the athletic facilities of Waipahu High School. In 2011, plans for a rail project were approved. It is a 20-mile route beginning from East Kapolei through Waipahu, connecting to Honolulu International Airport, downtown Honolulu, and ending at Almoana Shopping Center. With the rail project underway, the traffic commute through Waipahu gets congested from time to time. On the campus of Waipahu High School, classroom portables located near the gym have been demolished and replaced with new portables located near V Building. The old portables that still reside near the gym have been upgraded and improved in order to better the students' learning environment and to minimize the construction noise from the rail. Our next story takes us to the island of Kauai, where a popular community event takes place every first Saturday of the month in the town of Kapa'a. It's the first Saturday of the month, and Art Night is in full swing on the east side of Kauai in the town of Kapa'a. Created two years ago, Art Night has grown from a small gathering of local artists to a flourishing community event. Favorite part of Art Night? Um, it's a way to just be out in the community and, and connect with people and um, grow creatively. Uh, there's so many people that are passionate about art in general, and when they see someone that's doing something unique, uh, and they're, they're driven to it and it's, it's fun to like hear other people's experiences and you know, you know help inspire people and I get inspired by people that come by. Uh, there's always great music and great food and it's just a fun gathering place. It's a fun night to get together and get out here and bring the community together and um, have free, you know, like free entertainment, shopping, food. Art night is just getting to see everyone and getting to like just hang out with friends. The festivities continue into the night with many already looking forward to next month's celebration. This is Maine Kinimaka from Kapa'a High School for Hiki no. We're back at Waipahu High School in front of the Dream and Achieve mural. 
In 2012, Waipahu High School's early college program is one of the first of its kind in the state, and now there are over 320 students enrolled in the program. This program provides college academic experiences by allowing Waipahu High School students to earn both college and high school credits while still in high school. In the past two years, Waipahu students have taken college courses such as English 100, Psychology 100, Speech 151, Sociology 100, Calculus 205, and Astronomy 110 to get an early start on their college career. The courses are free for Waipahu High School students thanks to the support from the Mac and Ernie Foundation. We have also developed partnerships with two neighboring colleges. Leeward Community College and University of Hawaii, West Oahu. Upon graduating from high school, almost all early college program students who complete the requirements go on to attend a two-year or four-year college or university. We now head back to the big island of Hawaii, where a Waipio taro farmer heads a program to teach students how to work in the lo'i or taro patch. Today we are going deep into Waipio Valley to visit a taro growing program working in conjunction with Kanu Oka'aina. The program is led by Thomas Pahio, a lifelong resident of Waimea, who has been growing taro in Waipio since childhood. Now he focuses on researching different varieties of taro to combat the rising water temperatures and invasive species in the valley. We have this patch all in stages. So when the students come, they have a chance to uh, uh, harvest and plant. So we always keep one patch open for planting and one that we are uh, harvesting from. Each one of these is a different variety. And some of these varieties are really, really hard to get. So we were very uh, fortunate. When we got these, they were all planted in dry land. So making the switch over from uh, dry land to wetland was a rough transition for some of these plants. Some of them didn't make it. Down here, it's getting harder and harder to uh, uh, grow those varieties. The water is getting too warm. So what we do now is uh, uh, varieties like the LL Makoko, they do really, really good down here. We have uh, the Moe, the Lehua, the Uwawa, that's all YPO old varieties that they're giving us for, to try. This is the new way. And it's supposed to be plight resistant and it's very, very good. I mean, look at the size of the Oha, you know? And then this is uh, the Mama. And this is a small Mama. We get some big ones come out. We also try different other varieties, like this Palawan. It has runners, but this is only like a third of the size of that taro. So maybe if we can get another variety down here that could take this warmer water and stuff uh, and can uh, fight the plight, the leaf plight, uh, you know, might be good for all of us. Win-win. When I was young, I, I don't remember having this kind of algae in the water. One of the biggest challenges is uh, the apple snails. When you plant the huli, they eat around it. So you end up going back and replanting in your patch about three, four times. It's supposed to be an aquarium plant that uh, somebody had an idea of raising down here. They got carried away. He's making it harder, more hard for the farmers. This uh, program, that kids coming down, you know, maybe a thousand kids come here. If we get one to be a taro farmer, we scored. Yeah. This is Gabrielle Yuen coming from Hawaii Preparatory Academy for Hikino. Hikino is now on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Hikino Can Do. We are back at Waipahu High School in the lower side of Oahu. Behind me is a 75th anniversary mural painted and designed by some of the students from the class of 2013. The train tracks and sugarcane in the first section represents Waipahu's roots as a sugar plantation town. In the middle, gushing waters are shown, which is what Waipahu means in Hawaiian. Lastly, a Marauder B-26 plane is shown, representing where our mascot name, the Marauders, derives from. Here at our school, we've not only formed relationships with other schools in Hawaii, but also with schools in Japan as well. In 2014, Fukuyama Iyo High School, located in Hiroshima, Japan, became Waipahu High School's sister school. 
From September 8th to the 16th, 10 students from Fukuyama Iyo High School participated in an exchange program, allowing them to learn about the culture here in Hawaii while homestaying with Waipahu High School students. During the Fukuyama Iyo students' stay, they were able to form a lasting bond with the students of Waipahu High. Many of our students still keep in contact with the Japanese exchange students through social networking websites such as Instagram and Facebook. A principal at a public charter school here on Oahu sailed to New Zealand as a crew member on Hokulea's worldwide voyage. In 2014, Hokula and her sister canoe Hikianalia set out into the Pacific on a voyage to sail around the world. The voyage has been named Malama Hono, which means to care for the earth. The purpose of the trip is to bring awareness to other parts of the world about the importance of living sustainably. Kawaihona Okonawa Public Charter School Principal Alvin Parker was selected to be a crew member for one of the legs. It is part of the educational leg. It's a leg to Aotearoa Roa and around the North and South Island. Yeah, Uncle will hold it. Oh boy! Oh boy! There are only 315 sailors that have been picked to do this five year voyage. Uh, to be one of them, uh, Again, like I said, a humbling experience. A lot of people um, wanted and competed for, for positions on this voyage. And then to be selected as, as part of the crew for the Hokulea, again, was, uh, it, was, it was a very um, gratifying experience. In November, the canoes reached Aotearoa, also known as New Zealand. The last time Hokulea had landed there was 30 years ago during the voyage of rediscovery. The purpose of that journey was to retrace the routes used by ancient navigators to travel throughout Polynesia. While in Aotearoa, the crew members of both canoes, or va'a, participated in numerous ceremonies and other culturally significant events. Many indigenous people of New Zealand, known as Maoris, believe that their ancestors came from Hawaii. I, I um, came away with the feeling that there are a lot of people that that have the same perspective as I do concerning concerning the uh, taking care of the earth, Honoa. As Hokulea continues on her voyage around the world, she will bring the culture and ethnic pride of the Hawaiian people everywhere she goes. Hello, my They always said uh, Hawaiians couldn't do anything. And uh, voyaging is something that we could really do. I think it's changed uh, the way people look at Hawaiians. That's why it's important to me. This is Cody Bolig from Kawaihona Okanawa Public Charter School for Hiki No. We're back on the island of Oahu, here in the middle of Waipahu High School's iQuad. Here at Waipahu High School, we show our marauder pride and spirit throughout the campus. About 50 years ago, the principal at the time thought a cheering competition between grade levels would motivate friendly competition among students. Thus, the author's awards were established and they are awarded to the classes that best exemplify the marauder spirit. Last September, during our homecoming, we celebrated our 50th anniversary of the Author Awards. The tradition is stronger than ever and has been extended to a full week of inter-class competition, beginning with the Alma Mater Day, Lou and Gold Day, and the individual class cheers. For many of us here at Waipahu High School, the Author Awards are considered to be the high point of the school year where unity, spirit, and excitement fill our campus. Thank you for exploring both Hawaii and its schools with us. Especially our awesome town of Waipahu. We hope that you've enjoyed watching these videos as we have enjoyed sharing them with you. 
Make sure to tune in to the next episode of Ikino to see what the students of Hawaii can do! Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.